Hello, green thumbs and garden enthusiasts. Welcome to another exciting episode on the Gangster Garters YouTube channel. We're your go-to destination for all things green, from garden design to plant care and everything in between. We've got a fantastic lineup in store for you, packed with tips, tricks, and expert advice. So whether you're a seasoned gardener or just starting out, you're in the right place. Today we step into the enchanting world of hellebores, a winter-blooming beauty. Hellebores, known as winter roses or Christmas roses, are the stars of winter gardens. Boasting a stunning array of varieties, these hardy perennials defy the chill to bloom in hues from crisp white to deep plum. Let's dive into some of their fascinating characteristics. First up, we have the Helleborus niger, or the Christmas rose, a true winter bloomer bearing its pure white blossoms even through the snow. Then there's the Helleborus orientalis, the Lenten rose, with its multicolored petals ranging from pastel pink to deep mauve. And let's not forget the Helleborus foetidus, or the stinking hellebore. Don't be put off by the name, it's a beauty with its dark green foliage and nodding green flowers. These winter roses are the perfect antidote to the winter blues bringing color and life to the garden when most other plants are in hibernation. Now that we understand what hellebores are, it's time to learn how to choose the right location for them. Location is key when it comes to hellebores. These perennials are not too picky, but they do have their preferences. Ideally, you'd want to find a spot with well-draining soil. This helps prevent root rot, a common issue with these plants. The soil should also be rich in organic matter. So if you're planting in a less fertile area, consider amending the soil with compost or aged manure. Sunlight too plays a crucial role. While hellebores can tolerate a range of light conditions, they thrive best in partial shade. Direct harsh sunlight can cause the leaves to scorch. You should also consider the temperature. These plants are hardy and can withstand cold winters, but they appreciate a bit of protection from harsh winds. So in summary, the ideal location for your hellebores would be a well-draining, organically rich spot with partial shade and protection from harsh winds. With the perfect location chosen, it's time to move on to the planting process. Planting hellebores is easy if you follow these step-by-step -step instructions. First, let's get digging. Create a hole that's about two to three times as wide as the root ball of your hellebore. The depth should be such that the top of the root ball is level with or slightly above the ground surface. Next. Place your hellebore in the hole, ensuring it sits at the right depth. Once positioned, backfill the hole, gently firming the soil around the plant. Remember, hellebores prefer well-drained soil, so make sure not to pack it too tight. We then move on to spacing. Hellebores should be spaced about two to three feet apart to allow for ample growth. Lastly, give your newly planted hellebore a good drink of water. This helps settle the soil around the roots, reducing air pockets, and voila, you've successfully planted a hellebore. Now that your hellebores are planted, let's talk about watering and fertilizing. Like all plants, hellebores need the right amount of water and nutrients to thrive. The key to watering these beauties is moderation. Too much water can lead to root rot, while too little can cause wilting. During the growing season, water them thoroughly once a week, but don't let the soil get soggy. When it comes to fertilizing, hellebores are pretty low maintenance. They're not heavy feeders, so a light application of a balanced, slow-release fertilizer in the spring should suffice. Go for one that's high in phosphorus to encourage blooming. Remember, the goal is to create a favorable environment for your hellebores, one where they can grow, bloom, and show off their striking colors. And yes, while it's crucial to provide them with water and nutrients, it's equally important not to overdo it. With proper watering and fertilizing, your hellebores will thrive. Now let's move on to pruning and deadheading. Pruning and deadheading are essential for keeping your hellebores looking their best. Pruning is all about removing the old yellowing leaves that can often harbor disease. This is best done in late winter or early spring just as new growth starts to appear. Use clean, sharp shears and cut back to the base of the plant. Now let's talk about deadheading. Unlike many other perennials, hellebores don't need to be deadheaded to promote more blooms. However, removing spent flowers can keep your plant looking tidier and help prevent self-seeding if that's not desired. To deadhead, simply snip off the flower stem at the base once the bloom has faded. Remember, the goal of pruning and deadheading is to maintain a healthy, vigorous plant that provides a stunning display of flowers year after year. 
Now that we've covered pruning and deadheading, let's move on to pests and diseases. Like all plants, hellebores can be affected by pests and diseases. Now let's talk about some of the most common ones and how to tackle them. First on the list are aphids, tiny insects that suck the sap from your hellebores. If you spot them, a strong stream of water or an application of insecticidal soap should do the trick. Next up, we have black spot. This fungal disease causes dark spots on the leaves and can lead to defoliation. The best defense? Prevention. Keep the area around your plants clean and avoid overhead watering. Lastly, let's talk about slugs and snails. These pests love to munch on the leaves of your hellebores. To deter them, consider using natural repellents like crushed eggshells or copper tape around your plants. Remember, early detection and intervention are key to keeping your hellebores healthy and vibrant. With these tips, you can keep your hellebores healthy. Now let's talk about dividing and transplanting. Dividing and transplanting hellebores can help them thrive and multiply. This process is an essential part of plant propagation that allows you to spread the beauty of hellebores throughout your garden. The best time to divide hellebores is in early spring or late fall when the plant is dormant. You'll want to start by carefully lifting the clump of hellebores from the ground, taking care not to damage the root system. Once the clump is free, you can divide it into smaller sections, each with a healthy segment of root and a few leafy stems. After dividing, it's time to transplant. Choose a location that suits hellebore's needs, somewhere with partial shade and well-drained soil. Dig a hole that's wide and deep enough for the roots, place the division in, and fill the hole back up, firming the soil around the plant. Now that we've covered all the basics, let's move on to seasonal care tips. Seasonal care can make a huge difference in the health and beauty of your hellebores. As the seasons change, so do the needs of these resilient flowers. In the spring, focus on pruning and removing any dead or damaged foliage from winter. This allows for new growth and a cleaner, more vibrant display. When summer arrives, it's all about hydration. Water your hellebores well, especially during prolonged dry spells. This is also a good time to apply a slow-release fertilizer to keep your plants healthy and blooming. As autumn leaves start to fall, mulching becomes key. A thick layer of organic mulch not only insulates the soil from winter chill but also replenishes nutrients and improves soil structure. Winter is the time to let your hellebores rest. Aside from occasional watering on warmer days, little care is needed. Just ensure the mulch layer is still intact for protection against frost. With these seasonal care tips, your hellebores will bloom beautifully year-round. That's a wrap on our journey through the world of hellebores. We hope you're feeling empowered to cultivate these captivating plants. If our content is helping your green thumb grow, show some love to the gangster gardeners. Give that like button a click. Share this video with your fellow garden enthusiasts. And don't forget to subscribe. There's a whole lot more blooming content coming your way. Remember, the world is a garden waiting for you to explore. Happy gardening! Thank you.